<sighs> the face you make when you realize you forgot to turn the microphone on and you just laid down some unbelievable gold value in your video. So hey, let's shoot it again. <laughs> If you've ever wondered how to structure your win-win deals when working with money partners, the answer, and it's simpler than you think, is coming up in this video. Hi, I'm Russell Westcott. I help real estate investors start, grow, and scale the real estate investing portfolio of your dreams. So if you've been following along in this series, there are five parts in total in this series. This is segment number four. If you've been following along, honest to goodness, you're getting an entire masterclass. You're getting a glimpse into some absolute genius in this. You, think about this for a second. You are actually shortcutting your learning curve by years, if not even decades, by learning by one of the best of the best. Someone who I learned from early on truly shaved years off my learning curve. So let's think about this for a second. Let's do a real quick recap. So we've covered things such as generating leads. Where do you find investment partners? We've talked about how do you qualify those investment partners? How do you ob answer objections if any objections or points of resistance ever come up? Now in this part of the process, what we're going to dive head first into is the structuring. It is a lot simpler than you think. We're going to identify four variables that you need to negotiate in any deal. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. More videos like this are going to be coming out. This is just the tip of the iceberg of all the content that's gonna be coming out your way. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button and also leave a comment below. Okay, let's dive right into it without any further delay and ado. Please welcome Mr. Arlen Dolan for segment number four. Bye for now. The next line of questioning, I, I always like to ask the question about how people structure their deals a mm -hmm. little bit, uh, because it just gives us some thought process for people. And I, I know you're, how you're going to tell me how you structure it is going to be quite simple. And people go, well, it shouldn't be that simple. Well, yes, it should be that simple, actually. But what is your typical deal structure? Like, what do you, do you use uh, unanimous shareholders agreements or corporate structures or JVs or... There, there is a question in there somewhere in all right. this, but how do you typically like to structure your uh, arrangements with investors? Uh, all my structures are within corporations. Corp with, so you incorporate yeah. the venture. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, in saying that, I mean, if you're going to joint venture with somebody with one or two properties, it, that's not going to make economic sense to yes. do that. Yeah. So you got to be at that five, six properties plus for that to make sense. Um, one of the reasons why I do that is because it's, it's like an asset protection partner protection reason. For example, if, uh, if, I, if I'm partnered with Larry over here and I'm partnered with you, mm -hmm. um, because Larry and I have a separate company, then you and I have a separate company. If Larry got into a divorce situation or Larry got into a lawsuit situation, that shrapnel will never come, could never come and touch it's, you. It's shielded it's, within it's a corporate separate. veil. That's why, yeah. that's why I do that. Um, so, yeah. And, and uh, okay, so the, it's now do you hold your shares in that in a corporate structure or personally and vice, how, how does that typically, how do you hold your shares? I, I have a, let's use an example. I got this company with Russell, this company with Larry, this company with Bob and this company here. I have a company here a holding that company. owns the shares of each one of these. Okay, got it. Yes. And then your investors, it's up to them however they choose to do it. Right. So in if it was you and me investing, yep. I have my company that owns the shares in our, our company. Yep. If you want to hold yours within your own corporate structure yep. or you want to hold it personally or how, however you want is yep. up to you. And to get advice from my own accountant. Correct. And, uh, and you do 50-50? Uh, yes. Now, 50-50, like again, because most of my single family stuff is yeah. always done one way. They're, they are providing the money. Yeah. That's it. They Just a check. Yep. Okay. Mortgage so, is... So that means they're, they're not getting the financing. They're okay. not doing any of that stuff. I'm taking... Everything is taken care of from me. Yes. So in that situation, it's, it's just 50-50. Yeah. Now... Again, there's no right and wrong to how you want to do yep. your deals. Like, for example... The only thing that's wrong is if you can, don't agree to it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I say that's a staple, but, but that's also a staple because the, the purchasing and the way of managing is, is a staple. Yes. Now you, can, now you could, depending on what any person is doing, that could change percentages or change by changing the structure. Yeah. For example, you may 
choose to, if they're qualified for the mortgage and you're not, yes. you may choose to change the split. Yes. Right? So now maybe there's no right and wrong. Maybe they're 60 now and you're 40. Yeah. There's no right and wrong. Yeah. Like, I, I, like I said, and you know, I've done larger apartment deals yeah. where I'm not 50 because maybe I have an active partner with me with another partner that puts in the money and depending on who's qualifying or what group's qualifying and who's doing what work just, just decides the yep. ownership like I mean everybody's heard me that's heard me talk in the past say it's 50 50 but no I've done some stuff where I'm 25 yep. but it's because it's a different framework and a different structure to yep. the deal yes that's all yeah and and guys if you're if you're interested in the modular program that you're learning that's on the creating a win-win deals I actually the way I structured it is actually there's four things it's who brings the money who brings the mortgage who brings the management and who brings the mastery Correct. and those four things need to add up to a hundred yes right and, that, and then and then who does what, who does what, and then you figure out what, and okay, now what percentage weight goes to each of those, and now you got your split. Right. I guess the only thing, I, if I was the investor like yourself yeah. or me, is you got, like you said, those four pillars. Yeah. You, you want to be clear before you're talking to people yeah. how how you think, what you think would be fair. Yeah, what's the weighting, right? Because I don't go to somebody, say if you're a partner that doesn't yep. do real estate and go, so what do you think, how should the split be? No, I, I don't do, I, I, I know how it's going to be, yeah. but it does, again, depending on, like you said, your four pillars, yeah. it doesn't necessarily mean it's 50-50, but if it's they're qualifying and they're putting up the money and you're doing the rest, you already have in your mind what you think is fair. Yeah. You, you, you just let them know this is how that is. Yeah, and each, each deal is a little different. You know, for Correct. example, I'm doing one with a money partner right now where we're doing a flip where he's actually providing the money and the mortgage and he's got enough cash that he's just, he's essentially funding the whole thing. Right. And I'm doing all the work, uh, not, I'm at, not doing the work, but I'm doing all the management, the expertise I found it. I, essentially, I'm doing everything. We're doing a 50-50. Right. Um, and, and that happens all the time. And right. what we're gonna do is we're gonna parlay that into to more. But we're, we're clear on that right from the beginning. Right. You're providing all the money and if you don't wanna provide it all in cash, you have to bring go get a private mortgage right so it's, it's how they clear. get their cash is that's that's their thing yes and so so all those things so you keep that in it and the turn and the, it's a unanimous shareholders agreement correct um voting shares do you have the voting share do you have classes of shares typically between your partners or how do you structure that yeah yeah we got that um and then and i have a few like you, with most lawyers they got their kind of staple usa yeah. and then you have your few extra things that i like I don't remember everything because I don't. I'll never explain a USA to a partner. Yes. They, they need to have a lawyer explain it, right? Better for them, better for me. Yeah. But I'll have a couple extra clauses. They're like, well, I think one of mine says is is no one person can call for a sale unless it's gone up twenty five percent in value, mm -hmm. or if we've held it for. I think what mine says is five years or longer. Yeah. And the only reason why I have that, it's, and I explain it to them, it's a protection thing. Like like. If, if you drew a venture with me today and we just bought something and all of a sudden Uncle Larry gave you a stock mm -hmm. tip, so now you want out four days later, yeah. um, we're going to actually lose money in that because we're going to list it, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And because I'm on the hook for losses, I'm writing a check. Yes. So we're not doing that, or right? So, so And it also locks them in and ha make, it makes it crystal clear for them that this is not... This is a longer term investment. Yes. That's what this is. So on top of the unanimous shareholders agreement, do you also have a joint venture agreement on that as well? Or d does the unanimous shareholder agreement take in yes. effect to the... Yeah. So you have both two no. agreements or just the one agreement, the one. but essentially the unanimous shareholder agreement is a joint venture around, but with some corporate structuring in there at Correct. the same time. Correct. Correct. Okay. I mean, lawyers will explain that. So there's so <laughs> many things they, 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 you know, they have their eyes dotted and T's crossed. Like yeah. as if, if something, if I was killed, how is it handled? Like yeah. they have fruit, rice, and refusal. They cover so many things, yeah. you know. And, and it's a, it's a good thing to have happen yeah. because I've heard of a lot of crazy things in partnerships. Yeah. For example, it could be I'm, I'll use Russell as an example. Yeah, talk about crazy. <laughs> so, so I'm joint venture with Russell. Russell's married. He's got, he is, you know, he's got an awesome wife and stuff. But maybe let's, I'm going to say crazy stuff. She yeah. passes away. Russell remarries, and it, this lady's nuts. Yeah. Right. And so she's created all kinds of problems with now starts filtering to me. Yeah. We have ways to address all that kind of stuff. Wow. Right. It's, you don't know what can happen. Yeah. Now, don't mean to put you on the spot. I mean, is there is that a an example that could be shared with people? You know, I'm sure, like maybe just kind of a templated thing. Is that something that we could share with some people maybe watching this? Is that something you 
be able to just, well, I know a lot of them is personal, but is it something we could clean up and share with some people or? Possibly, I mean, I, I, I have to ask the lawyer that drafted it if that's okay. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, me, it, yeah, no problem. Right, but here's the thing is, uh, at the end of the day, you just need to know what's on it and you need to have a team of people and uh, that can explain it. And you said something, and I think it's a point we need to really make and this happens a lot too, is sometimes, and I funny, I was coaching some clients right away and they were working with an investment partner and lo and behold, it came up with, well, send me your joint venture agreement and let me take a look at it before we want to do. What do you, how do you react and how do you respond to that when somebody, an investor wants their joint venture agreement sent to them? Oh, well, it's easy. And they're not, they're, I'm not invested. They're, they haven't committed. They haven't really done anything at this point. Then I'm not sending them one. You don't send one? No. No, no because it, that's putting the cart before the horse. Yeah. Like, so I'm sitting there going, first... Um, do you trust me? Yeah. Do you want to invest with me? Do you believe in real estate, the yeah. concept of investing in real estate? I've explained how the split will be. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that acceptable or exciting or good for you? Mm -hmm. If all that is there, yeah. now, we're, now we're somewhere. Yeah. Then I'll say, then I'll go, yeah, what I'll get you to do, I do it the same way all the time. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not lying, I do not have a copy in my USA. And that's on purpose. Yes. They say, can you send me a copy of USA? And I say, I don't have one. Mm. They're like, what? It's at my lawyer's office. Mm. And it's the honest truth. Yes. And I do that so I don't start ever trying to give advice on a USA. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, so I say, so here's how it goes. I go, so I'll line up for you to meet with my lawyer mm -hmm. to explain the USA. Now, once he's explained, because he's yeah. going to explain it the best because he wrote it. Yes. Then, if that seems fairly acceptable to you, yep. then you will take that and you will go to your lawyer. Yes. And if you don't have one, you know, we'll fig find one for you and you yep. get independent legal advice. Yes. That's how I do it. Uh, and then if they come back and, and, and you said some that just rarely they come back because, because it's, well, it's, yeah. I, 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 and then this is the truth. I said, yeah. I've never had somebody come back and say it's not fair and, yeah. and, and need it changed. Yeah. Um, it's the same I have with family. Yeah. You know, and it's done fair because yeah. that's how it should be done. So and, I've never had a problem. In many cases, it's it's very, um, it's not in the favor of the investor, but it's very written to, for their protection. Correct. Right? And that's really what the agreement is all about. Is And, and now, I sometimes I preface this when people go get independent legal advice. I say something like the following. Now, understand their job is not to give you deal advice. Their Correct. job is to give you advice on the agreement to just make sure it protects your interest. That's the only thing, they, a good lawyer, that's the only thing they should do. Correct. Sometimes lawyers overstep, but that's typically what, the, the only thing they can offer is that just advice on the protection for the client. Correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah, never the deal, never we're not talking about the deal. Yes, uh, yeah, because because I've and I've had some lawyers that, or people went to their lawyer, came back and said, oh, my lawyer doesn't think this is a good investment deal. And I said, well, what investment opportunity have they given you? Right. So are they are they going to work for? Did they work for free to try and make you money uh, on this? And, and you know what what opportunity did your lawyer provide you to actually make you some some make your return on your money? Well, the funny thing is for me is I, I usually don't run into that problem with the lawyer question the deal because I don't bring a deal to somebody until, until we've already crossed all that, yes. and then I'll say then. Maybe once we cross, maybe I'll have something, mm -hmm. or maybe I'll still have to be working on something. Ah. So they don't, the, the lawyer doesn't get a chance to assess a deal. Not my lawyer, not yeah. their lawyer, not anybody's lawyer. Yes. So your your part of your process is you will show somebody a typical deal. Right. This is not an actual deal where you can invest. And this is the deal. If I was, if you're ready to invest, or you want to do this, this is the kind of a deal I would put you into. Right. Then you actually get to the point where they'll actually sign the USA. Monies will be deposited, and then you'll go out and you'll go find the deal. Then I find the deal. Ah, not until then. Good, nice. Or, or you maybe offer something you already have to them after the fact. Have you ever yes, um, I've done that. joint ventured a property that you've owned yourself? Yeah, quite quite a few times. But you, you, because your time, you put a lot of time and effort. Guys, if you, if you know how much time and effort it is and diligence and, and research, to, especially if you're buying an apartment building, there's, mm -hmm. there's tens of $50,000 in just diligence cost Correct. to just to rate the offer. Correct. Right? You need to have some money and you need to have, a, you need to have commitment and you need to have skin in the game. Right. And that's what, I, like I said, it's, it's go time for me to find the investment property once the company is already set up and the money is in there. Right. I, that's the one I learned... 
way years ago, <laughs> the, the hard way, way. <laughs> cuz someone had the money and 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 they and, and, and you know, they have it right away. Yeah. So I had the deal and then there's hiccups. I mean, at the end of the day, I got it, but they didn't have the money actually yes. right away. And then it took forever to get it in there. And the money they had was less than what they said and all that stuff. So this just clarifies it, makes it easy. Yes. Uh, okay, a couple more lines of questions here. And um, now before we actually turn the cameras on, you're sharing, you're having a meeting with somebody here that's coming out. Are they coming here or are you meeting in town? I'm here. Um, so you're, you're currently looking at and getting more investors coming in. What... Uh, in today's marketplace, like you've been, we both have been doing this for a long time, and mm -hmm. people, I don't want us to ever be accused. Well, that worked 20 years ago, and that doesn't work today. Right. You're having an investor meeting today. Right. With somebody, and uh, and hopefully that number will go even up higher of what you stated earlier. What What are you doing in today's environment to to raise capital? No different than what I've always done. Right, it's just different numbers, and different deals. Yeah, exactly. And, and when someone comes out, like we say, we have I have someone coming out here today, and uh, it's just a casual conversation. There is mm -hmm. no presentation. I don't know what was what I'm going to say and what they're going to say back until mm -hmm. we're sitting down. Yeah, it's it's just easy going. I don't want anyone to feel pressure. Mm -hmm. It's just we're sharing information, we're sharing views, we're sharing, like I'll find out what their investment timeline is. <laughs> I'm trying to see if it's a fit. Because yeah. there's been the numerous times where I go, one, maybe real estate isn't even a fit. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I remember I had one guy that I found out about his business. His, his business, he's, he's getting a 40% ROI on his cash. And I said, could you use cash to grow it even more? He said, yeah. Then I go, I don't know if it makes sense to give me money because you're, you're, you're doing great like yes. that. And you're in 100% control. Mm -hmm. If anything changes, call me. But until then, dude, do your own thing. Yeah. So again, my, today it'll just be a, just a relax. Yeah. And where it goes, it's not closing. It's not trying to see if the guy will give me money today. Maybe that happens. Maybe it doesn't. It doesn't matter because yeah. I want to do the right thing for people. Yeah. You provide a value, provide a service, and do what's right for what's best for them. And then we see where where yeah. that ends. Now, I would imagine your your deal, like the, the process of working with investors has not changed because a truism and things that work, things that work. Mm -hmm. And this works for you because it's a style that you have. I think it's a style anybody can have. Right. And quite frankly, that's one of the reasons why I really resonated when I heard Arlen first present. When I saw it, it's like, man, I can do that. And yeah, I think exactly. everybody had that moment of looking at that and go, you just... More than just how brilliant you are at the structuring and all this, I think you instill the confidence in people that it can be done. An entire generation of, of investors, and we're talking now 15 years ago, mm -hmm. and I hope to we instill a new confidence in up and coming uh, investors. But I imagine the deals are a little different than what you were doing. You know, way back when you were yes. maybe doing a townhouse and this, that, or other. Now you're doing some big developments. So, so what's the? Are you doing? Obviously, probably doing bigger deals. So what? Process the same with investors, but doing a different deal. Right. What are you What are you typically looking at right now for deal wise? What do you What would you recommend putting? I came to you and I got a, a million bucks. What would you What would? And let's say we align and we're ready to go. What kind of a, a deal are you looking to do? Would you put that to work? You know, I, I've learned not to pigeonhole deals, so mm, I'm okay. open to I'm open to a lot of things. Like it's all real estate based. Like mm -hmm. it could be. You know, there's a, I'm sure you're talking to a lot of senior investors too. That yeah. I mean, there's opportunities in self storage. There's opportunities in mm -hmm. mobile home parks. There's mar opportunities in multifamily. Yeah. There's you know, in in develop land development. It's it, you, the trick is to find a deal that works. There's tons of deals out there, yeah. but they're not. They're not very strong deals right the trick is to see and then for me it's like you throw in this stuff on the hopper and see what pops out the bottom yeah so so open to a lot yeah so i imagine a lot of it would come down to the discussion is the person that you're working with if if they have based upon their the amount of capital they have based upon their horizon based upon their risk profile based upon whether they need cash or they're okay to wait so you actually probably just put that into a blender and you say oh, what pops out is this is i think or, this is a really good opportunity right what makes some of it is what makes the most sense to them and then yeah. the other thing is the trick is you know is finding the right opportunity that 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 is a that you see as a winning opportunity yeah. there's, there's a for apartment buildings i mean there's the guys that are skilled, you know, yeah. they might throw 50 in the hopper before mm -hmm. they find three worth writing an offer yeah. on. Yeah. Instead of, you know, if you're doing your job as your partner, you don't just 
you know, there, there's three that are out there. Let's just buy one of those. Yeah. You can't do that, right? Yeah. So what you're talking about, what you're having today is, I, I call it the term is essentially a discovery session. Correct. Right. And and then from there, you're going to determine if you can help them right. and what is the best prescription right. you can offer of a course of action. Now, here's the thing I might say that I'm also a believer in that's a lot different than many is like, I see a lot of investors, again, they, they do a few single family or they want to go straight to multifamily or something. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a still big believer in single family yeah. for a number of reasons. One is this, I, and I've even talked to people like this, say you have a guy that wants to do some big deals. I said, I, I also like the idea of doing a couple single families with him. Mm -hmm. The reason why I say that is because if you ever, if they're ever in a spot where they need access to cash, you know, technically, you can turn over a single family, sell or refinance, depending on the position you're in, in short order. Yeah. But if you're in a big commercial deal, that, you know, you're gonna probably six months to, if you were gonna liquidate. Right. Or, or in a, and if you do do that, you could have six figure penalties. Right. So it's nice to have. Yeah. Uh, the different options for different people, right? Right. All right, and just, you know, based upon what they want. So. Okay, so I'm going to do one real quick reset because this last section, I don't want the cameras to run out. Uh, I, the last section, we're just going to, we're going to talk about um, what's next for you. Okay. And also, we're going to leave everybody with a little bit of a, maybe a, uh, some marching orders and some inspiration to, to, if they're feeling a little bit stuck on what to do next. So Great. I'm just going to do a real quick reset. we got one more segment back here with Mr. Arlen Dolan. Okay. All right, so what did you think? What an incredible look into the mind of a genius, in my personal opinion. So I've been just having a thorough blast in this conversation series that I'm having with Arlen. Now, here's the wonderful thing. I actually have more than 24 of these in-depth, long-form interviews like this with Arlen, and they're all part of this thing called the Raising Capital Academy. Maybe you've been watching this series, and maybe you're questioning, wondering, well, what is this Raising Capital Academy? In the notes below, I'm going to leave for you a link to check out the details details of the Raising Capital Academy. You click on the link and you read all the details. If it resonates with you, just hit one of the application buttons. I'm Russell Westcott. I help real estate investors start, grow, and scale the real estate investing portfolio of your dreams. Bye for now.